As of late, I have been having a very intrusive thought. Actually, no. To explain this properly, have you ever been to the Hugh Lane Gallery in Dublin? Have you ever seen Francis Bacon's art studio? If you've not, you can Google it, it's fine. But it's chaos. It's paint everywhere. It's almost kind of magical. And a lot of people say this, that like, the space you live, the space you work is a reflection of your inner thoughts and your inner personality. And I think about all these crazy artists through history, these people that I love to see and I love to watch and I just am completely absorbed by their lives. People like Werner Herzog and his intensity and his borderline, borderline madness. madness. People live such strange, magical, weird lives and their brains work in such strange and magical and weird ways. And I don't think mine does. Hmm. As a real, real quick run through, I've lived a really nice life. Siblings, extended family, friends, school, regular stuff. Then I became a teenager, went out with more friends, started getting involved with hobbies like circus. Then in my 20s, moved out, got jobs, got creative. Most people around me do the same things. Like I have friends who've lived much crazier lives, who've traveled around the world, who've accomplished great things, who act in strange ways. And I never really felt weird. There's a real problematic question. Does suffering make great art? Or does sadness make great art? I don't like that idea. I don't think it's a healthy idea. But it looks like it's true. Just as much as I see, I mean, there's examples where it's not true, of course, but it looks like it's true. It looks like suffering makes you a better artist and that staying sad is a great way to keep producing great things. I don't know if I want to live like that, but that's what it seems to be. A lot of the reason I've been thinking about this stuff is I have been watching Anthony Bourdain. He travels around the world and he eats food, talks to artists and wonderful people and writes about it. It's so full of life. It's so articulate, you know? And again, I watched his documentary. I watched about his life and who he was and what he went through, what he put himself through, what he put others through and how it eventually all ended. And I think the root of all these questions about me being normal, I may want to be. Um, like, People that I know, people I love, who've known me for years, will describe my story differently. Um, like me coming from a broken home, being surrounded by some of the craziest family members you can imagine, getting up to crazy mischief before joining the circus and breathing fire and traveling with strange people to a few different places, I guess. Depending on who you're asking, I haven't lived a normal life. And depending on who you're asking, I'm not particularly normal. There was another thing I wanted to mention, but I've kind of forgotten what it was. Slipped my mind, slipped my mind. That's what it was. When it comes to telling your own story, and I do tell mine, I guess in a very normal way, I don't seem to focus on certain beats and rhythms. But that's what makes up a story. That's the difference between a life and a story is the fact that in life there are no beats, there are no rhythms, but in a story you choose, you select. When I worked at the National Leprechaun Museum, I learned so much, but most importantly, I learned about the framing of stories. If you've ever tried to frame a picture, you'll know how expensive it is. And you'll know how important and difficult it is to frame a goddamn picture. That's because they're so important. They can make such a difference. The picture is completely transformed by the frame you put it in. Your life is completely transformed by the frame that you put it in. The core of that question, the reason I've been asking that question of myself, am I too normal? I think I kind of want to be. I might be a little bit afraid of giving in to some of the craziness. With Anthony Bourdain, 
you see him flip back and forth. In some moments, he's so happy and he's truly content and he sees such meaning. And then the next day or the next moment, he's angry and bitter and grumpy and sad and sees no point in going on. There's a back and a forth and a back and a forth. He's oscillating between the two. And <laughs> even the other day when people have been asking me lately how, I, how I've been how I've been feeling, I tell them I'm a pendulum, an emotional pendulum. That I'm going back and forth and back and forth. And I've been like that for a long time, but when I see Anthony Bourdain oscillating out of control, I get afraid that the same could happen to me. And I think that might be why I want to be either seen as or to be or to see myself as normal but then does that make me less of an artist i don't have an answer for this question <laughs> if that's what you're expecting all i have to say is i look at people like kurt cobain and amy winehouse even somebody like andy warhol who didn't die young but i look at all of them and i think yeah, they were fantastic, but I don't think I want that for myself or the people around me. And I don't know if there's an alternative. I don't know if I get to be well-adjusted and extremely creative. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, if that's possible. I guess it's possible. So I don't know. To sum it all up, the only reason I'm talking about this, the only reason I'm making this video is so that I can get it off my chest, that I can... <sighs> finally let go of this idea, this question that's been burning in my head. But do let me know what you think, because having these questions all by yourself in your room in the middle of the night, it's always good to know that other people are thinking the same thing. Or if you've ever experienced this, or if you've got a solution for this, is there something that I'm missing? Is there a piece of really valuable inspiration from some crazy poet? Okay, okay, that's enough for now. I'm going to see you in like two weeks because I've been so late with this one. But hey, ain't that just the way?